Warner Media boss Ann Sarnoff condemns toxic Snyder Cut fans, forgets Warner Media promotes uh, defunding. Okay, the, defunding the police and anything. This is a bounding the comics article. We're very balanced here. We have a uh, bounding in the comics for one perspective and CBR for the other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, yeah. we, we do try to, but but ironically, both sides are pointing to the fact that Warner Media is crapping on in quotes toxic fans anyway. i'm telling you let me start out with as soon as you start talking about yeah, quotes, yeah. the people giving you money as being toxic f you company uh discussing Zack snyder's justice league and the future of dc films varieties brett lang asked there's also been a toxic side to the fandom with reports that critics and some of your executives have received threats for not endorsing the snyder cut or for being perceived as standing in the way of its release. What's your reaction to that behavior? Sarnoff responded, say, stating, we're not tolerating any of that. That behavior is reprehensible no matter what franchise you're talking about or what business you're talking about. It's completely unacceptable. She continued, I'm very disappointed in the fans that have chosen to go to that negative place with regard to DC, with regard to some of our executives. It's just disappointing because we want this to be a safe place to be. The Warner Media CEO went on, we want DC to be a fandom that feels safe and inclusive. We want people to be able to speak up for the things they love, but we don't want it to be a culture of canceling things that any small faction isn't happy with sarnoff concluded we're not about that we're we are about positivity and celebration this is this goes back to again what i've what i've always first i want to see the receipts what kind of what kind of uh threats have you been getting because if you're getting actual like death threats then you need to be calling in the police and arresting some people because that's that's illegal OK, if if what you mean by threat is if you don't give us what we want, you're not going to get my money. That's how freaking business works, you dumbass. <laughs> Notice how the reporter fed her that question, too, because the journalist is, is yeah. on, on the side as far as Absolutely. the toxic fans go. This goes back. This was many, many years ago. This is when all this crap started with the journalists. It started with gaming journalism. And Mass Effect 3, I don't know if you heard of the Mass Effect series. Uh, it was an RPG science fiction series. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they came out with part three. And all the fans hated the ending. They were screaming about the ending because the ending was basically half-assed. Okay, pardon the expression. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they were yelling about the ending. And then all of a sudden, all the gaming journalists all got up and said, you know, I think sometimes fans are entitled. Should you really be complaining or expecting better? We just accept what you get. And they, they started on this thing about entitled fans. Okay. Yeah. And this, I think, is kind of carried over that if you complain about something being bad, you know, you're entitled. You know, I grew up in the 80s and I've, been, I've actually been watching a lot of old Cisco and Eberts from the 80s. It's funny. I watched one that had 16 candles and like sure. breaking two electric boogaloo on it. You know, I'm watching all these old reviews. They would criticize movies all the time. No one called them toxic, okay? Right. Maybe behind closed doors, but it wasn't considered odd to criticize something for being bad, okay? You can be critical of something, okay? The point that Ann Sarnoff is reminding me of Kathleen Kennedy, and, you know, yep. we, we've been talking about for a while, like, these rumors of the, civil, of the Civil War over at Lucasfilm, and mm -hmm. now it's looking like there's a war going on between Warner Media and AT&T, yeah. okay? Uh, they seem to be at cross-purposes, and I think, and I think what we're seeing too, what we're calling like a civil war or things. I think what we're seeing though is a fight between power players in Hollywood that want to create product that makes money. So, like uh, Zack Snyder wants to create a product that makes money. Now, we may not like his vision or like his movies, right. but I think that's primary what they're for. John Favreau with the Mandalorian was trying to create something that will, you know, be popular and make money. Okay. Right. And that might be all it is. Okay. And I think we have another group of people in Hollywood that want to use this media to push their values and beliefs, you know, their woke values and belief. And um, yeah. 
you know, and and it's, it's like we have like the Mandalorian versus the High Republic right now. We have a uh, Snyder cut versus J.J. Abrams Superman. Project, and and so. what it really boils down to is you just want to take these people that are talking about toxic fans and entitled and stuff and just grab them by the lapels and tap them on top of the head and say, hello, McFly. What do you think you're in the business of? What do you think business is? Yes, the person who pays the money is entitled to something. So basically, they're calling Snyder fans, though, toxic. Okay, that's the big crux of all this, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a quote from Zack Snyder. In an interview for Sean O'Connell's book, Release the Snyder Cut, the crazy story behind the fight that saved Zack Snyder's Justice League, Snyder spoke out against the idea of the Snyder Cut fandom being inherently toxic. In regards to the toxic fandom, or it's a win for toxic fandom, again, in what world does this toxic fandom raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for for a ch you know for yep. something for something prevention for self deletion you know, yeah for self deletion prevention okay cider asks how is that toxic fandom they probably achieved more than any other fan base and done more good than any other group so i yeah. don't understand now that, I, I that's the other side of it right it's like you think that you're so morally right what have you done other than piss people off and 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 call people names yeah. really Whereas the people that you're scorning are out there raising money for charity. What have you tangibly done? You self-entitled pieces of crap. This is, and he said, following the film, CBN HBO Max director actually thanked the fans for their overwhelming support and seeing your messages and your responses to the film has made it all worth it. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm actually starting to think that he, that what we were saying last week about how, yeah, you know, I, I, I think I jumped the gun originally too when we were going, yeah. Oh, you know, he's just coming on there to pick, pick on geeks. I think he was just delivering a message Warner Brothers told him to deliver about him not being affiliated or something. Yeah. I, I do not think that he had animus to that group that he was on. Now that I'm thinking, and people are yeah. absolutely falling for it, hook, line, and sinker, and turning on him and turning on everything. And, you know, this is what they wanted. They wanted the fans of Zack Snyder to turn on Zack Snyder. They we, wanted anybody who supported it to, to turn on each other. They're trying to destroy. Look, this is no different than what is happening in the media today, in, in, in the, in the social, socialist media uh, arena. They're trying to turn us all against each other. We, we've had arguments on on our taste in the Snyder. I don't like the Snyder films. I don't really yeah. like the DCU. That's what uh, I said. I don't, don't, I don't put me in a situation parts... where I have to defend this guy, but I yeah. do. Uh, sorry, Suicide Squad fans. The ire cut, the air cut has got some bad news. Isn't yeah, that ironic? So they're, they're already okay. shutting down. They're like, look, you got your, your Snyder cut. Don't think you're going to get an air cut. Yeah. and Because uh, you entitled fans don't get to have what you want. And I was always curious about the air cut because for all I know, Suicide Crowd might actually be a good movie if we got the proper cut. I don't the, know. You okay. know, there's no way to know. I mean, there's always something to be said for you can't always just blame the director or just blame whomever for any film that comes out. I mean, because even look at, you know, for the most part, we pretty much like the original Superman. Most of us do. Um, but even that, Donner got fired by uh the sulkides and uh mankowitz was put in charge right and that's what happened with the second one the second one was okay but we also got you know the cellophane s and some other <laughs> weird stuff but the know? whole era of of putting out a product that the fans want to actually make money seems to be over with yeah, over at warner brothers you have the ideologues that want to call all the fans toxic. Everybody that gives them money is toxic and evil and ist and phobes. And uh, it's not made for you. So we don't really want your money. And that's why, um, you know, AT&T came out and said, you're going to get the Snyder cut because it's a cheap way for us to make some money. Problem is the Ayers cut would not be as easy to do. But it also does speak to the fact that See, I don't. I haven't heard anyone no, else say but, this. But he this is, says he said it would be easy to complete, though. That the air was quoted as saying that, though. Well, what it comes down to is this is another, and 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 
I heard the guys on Midnight's Edge allude to it, but I don't think they said it strongly enough. And I don't hear anyone else talking about this at all. These fans wanting so-and-so's cuts of such and such is a direct um, accusation at the studios and their ridiculous uh, uh, meddling in in these films, okay? You would have gotten the Snyder Cut if, well, okay, you could you could argue if, if he hadn't had the tragedy in his life. But it's very clear that the studios were getting involved and pushing for something that wasn't what Snyder wanted. Same thing with the Ayers Cut. That whole messed up, just garbage fire was uh, nobody's vision. It was Warner Brothers saying, we got to get it lightened up. We got to get more humor in it. The fans want this. The fans want that. Look, the fans want, yes, but they want it to be consistent too. You know, that's like saying, you know, we've heard that people like pizza and they like chocolate and, you know, they like pasta. Let's put them all together in a blender. They should love that. <laughs> no, no, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And yet that's how studios think. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. And my comment, but my comment was about this article. So it doesn't matter if the Snyder Cut is successful. What matters is the new era. And what is this new era? Okay. And yeah. I think it's called, I think it's the woke era. Okay. Yep. Uh, what Warner, Warner Media calls the, I think, were they calling it the multiverse over at Warner Media or are they calling it something else? I don't know. Uh, they, Justice League Restore the Snyderverse campaign hits over 2 million tweets. This is a recent article. You, that's probably why you didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was interesting about this is a quote that Sarnoff makes. She's the head of, she's the CEO of Warner Media. However, why Warner Media Studios uh, CEO Ann Sarnoff recently asked fans to be patient post Snyder Cut, even if the studio's plans for the DC uh, EU do not involve Zack Snyder. We're always going to listen to our fans, but we are in the service of the broadest fan base, and we owe them an integrated, holistic strategy, Sarnoff said. We are the shepherds of the franchise and hopefully when the fans see what we've got in store they'll know that dc is in good hands across many different platforms with many different creators we want different voices in the mix for certain fans that want singular voices they may be disappointed but we would ask them to be patient and see what we've got in store because perhaps the newer voices in the mix will have just as compelling stories to tell on balance, you, of course, want to listen to your fans, but we do want to stay true to our vision and our vision for DC and build on that. I have no idea if this came out before or after that Toxic Fans comment, but I know it's recent. What well, does she go? Here's what I'm going to say. Here's yeah. how I'm hearing it. Okay. Yeah, you may, yeah, I may hear this. This is yeah, my ahead. take on it. Mm -hmm. We want to give our fans what, what they want. But if they want something that's other than what we're prepared to give them, that's <laughs> not going to happen. True. That's exactly it. Because if they really did care about the fans and, you know, we're going to give you all these because they're talking about going forward, not having one thing tied into another. And they're basically going to do the whole shotgun shell and see what sticks. Right. Yeah, um, maybe multiverse thing, whatever. If that was the case then keep making Snyderverse. Obviously, people enough people want it that, you know, you can keep putting these things out on your streaming service and continue to make money off of it. But heaven forbid that should be your goal. That's not your goal. Your goal is to force feed people what you want to feed them. And what is the main word she uses here? We are shepherds of the franchise. Um, I've heard Shepard use in in a, in as as a as another uh, euphemism for something else, and that is priest. Okay, yeah. um, and I'm wondering if some people in high in high positions of Hollywood are now seeing themselves as priests of like I, I don't know like as as like of an some ideology, new, some new ideology, woke religion, what you call it, and not as movie makers. What, what's uh, ironic is franchise. Is okay? We used to say that. We used to say that you are the shepherds of our mythology. But the problem is that they don't care about our mythology. They want to proselytize us to their 
new religion. 